Okay, so sometimes we might have probability experiments um, or probability um, examples where we have multiple stages to the situation. So um, generally speaking, where we've got multiple stages, a tree diagram is going to be the best way to represent um, what's happening. And sometimes it's about thinking a bit carefully what's the best way to, to construct the tree diagram. You don't always need to have, you know, if you're rolling a fair die twice, you don't need to have, you know, well, the first roll I could get one, two, three, four, five, or six, and then the second roll I could get one, two, three, four, five, or six. If you're only interested in rolling sixes, then your tree diagram becomes getting a six or not six, okay? And then you don't have so many branches. So thinking about how you set up the tree diagram is important. Um, so example one, use a tree diagram to help you list the sample space when a coin is tossed three times and the outcome of each toss is noted. Okay, so this is simply about organizing and thinking about sample space. So first toss could be a head or a tail. The next toss could also be a head or a tail. And then the third toss can also be a head or a tail. And from here we can see the possible outcomes. We can have head, head, head at that first one, first branch, head, head, tail along the second branch, head, tail, head along the third branch, head, tail, 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 head, head, tail, head, tail, 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 head, tail, tail, tail. So we have, um, so here is our sample space. And, um, what does it say? Use a tree diagram to help you list the sample space when a coin is tossed three times and the outcome of each toss is noted. Okay, so this would be our sample space. We really probably should list it as a, you know, sample space, ears, head, 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 tail, oops, head, head, tail, etc. But I'm just going to leave them listed like that for now, given I've already written them out. Um, example two. Cassie deals cards from a deck of 52 until she has two of the same suit. The first card she deals is a spade. The second card she deals is a heart. Use a tree diagram to illustrate the sample space. Okay, so what we want to think through here is she's drawing a card from a deck of 52 cards. It doesn't mean we're going to have 52 branches at our first stage. Okay, the first thing we notice is she's only interested in the suits. She wants the same to get the same suit. So we're only going to be listing the suits. So therefore, she could draw, a, you know, hearts, diamonds, spades or clubs. That's all. Okay. Now, additionally, we also know what happens on her first two draws. And we know she's going to continue to deal cards until she has two of the same suit. So we know that the first card that she draws is a spade. The next card she draws is a heart. Can I be really clear about it? I find students tend to really make a mess of tree diagrams. You don't write the outcome on the branch of the tree diagram. The outcome is the destination for the branch. So from the beginning of the, the experiment, there's only one path you can go down and it takes you to drawing out a spade. Then there's only one path that takes you to drawing out a heart. From this point, she could get one of four things. Hearts, diamonds, clubs, spades. Okay. Um, so, yeah. When you write on the branches of the tree diagram, we'll get to that in a bit, but you put probabilities on the branches if they're not equally likely. If the branches are equally weighted, then you don't need to put probabilities on them. Um, but if they're not equally likely, you weight the branches by writing the probability on the branch, but the outcome is at the end of the branch. Okay. Um, all right, so she keeps going until she has two of the same suit. Now, if she draws a heart the second time around, she's got two hearts. If she draws a spade, sorry, not the second time, it's the third draw, she's got two spades because she's already drawn a spade and a heart. So she only needs to go again if she's got a diamond or a club. So she could get hearts, diamonds, clubs or spades. She could get hearts, diamonds, clubs or spades. Okay. Now at this point, um, when she draws the head there, heart there, sorry, she's got two hearts. She draws the diamond there, she's got two diamonds. If she draws the spade there, she's got two spades. So she only needs to draw again if she has a club. I'm sorry, if she, yeah, if she gets a club. Um, deals carpenter until she has two of the same suit. Okay. Hearts, diamonds, clubs, spades. All right, again, at this one here, 
she, she draws a heart here, she's got two hearts. If she draws a diamond here, she's got one of everything, so she has to go again. If she draws a club, she's got two clubs. If she draws a spade, she's got two spades. So she only needs to draw another card. Oops, hearts, diamonds, clubs and spades, if she drew a diamond. So now she's got two hearts, two diamonds, two clubs, two spades. So no matter what she draws at that fifth draw, she's going to have two of each, okay? Because she's already got one of each. Hearts, diamonds, clubs, spades. So we're done. They're the end points. Okay, use a tree diagram to illustrate the sample space. Okay, we don't need to actually list out the sample space. It's just use the tree diagram to illustrate it. So these are all the different things that could happen. She could draw spade, heart, heart, and stop. Spade, heart, diamond, heart, and stop. Spade, heart, diamond, diamond, and stop. Spade, heart, diamond, club, heart, and stop, etc. What is the minimum number of cards she must deal in order to ensure that she has two of the same? Okay, so that's her first card. That's her second card. That's her third card. This is her fourth card. And she has to draw at least five cards to ensure that she's got two of the same suit. We've previously only seen tree diagrams in which each branch is equally likely to occur. It's also possible to draw weighted tree diagrams in which the probability of each branch occurring is not equally likely. And in that case, we weight the branch with the probability, as I mentioned previously. So example three, a jar contains three red and four black marbles, and another jar contains two red marbles and three black marbles. If one marble is selected from each jar, find the probability that two black marbles are selected. Okay, so first jar, she could get red or black. So this is jar one. And then from jar two, she could get red or black. Is it red or black in jar two as well? Yeah. Okay, but each of those branches isn't equally likely. So when she selects from jar one, um, it's got three reds and four blacks. So it's three out of seven. The probability is three sevenths of getting a red and four sevenths of getting a black. From jar two, um, two red and three black. So that is two fifths getting a red and three fifths getting a black. Okay, so that's a weighted tree diagram. So outcomes at the ends of the branches, probabilities weight the branches, okay? If one marble is selected from each jar, find the probability that two black marbles are selected. Probability of black and then black, it's actually an intersection, black and black, would be this branch here that we're interested in, black and then black again. Okay, And when we're calculating probabilities in tree diagrams, we multiply along the branches, so that's going to be four sevenths times three fifths. Let's talk more about that in a later video. Um, that's going to be 12 on 35. So in a tree diagram, you multiply along the branches. If you're wanting to um, include if more than one branch corresponds to the event that you're interested in, then you would add up the probabilities of each of those branches. So we multiply this way and then we add going this way. All right. Uh, so probability of two, selecting two black marbles is 12 and 35, on 35. A table can also be useful in multi-stage experiments. Um, particularly where the tree diagram would be quite unwieldy if you've got sort of lots of um, lots of um, outcomes in the sample space. Um, and something as simple as two dice are rolled and the sum of the numbers showing is found. Um, so rolling two dice, if you were to draw that as a tree diagram, you know, you've got six options at your first stage and then you've got another six at each, so you'd have 36 branches in total. So a table's a neater way to write this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my table. Um, but again, the table's limiting because it doesn't work if you're going to roll three dice, for example. But we're only rolling two. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I'm just going to emphasize that. Okay, so this is die one. Okay, and then on the second die, one, two, three, four, five, six. So again, this is... Okay, so here we've got 36 equally likely outcomes in here. All right. Um, now, I would also fill out the table um, 
depending on what it is that you're interested in in this particular um, problem. So here the two dice are rolled and the sum of the numbers showing is found. So if we roll a 1 and a 1, we would calculate the sum to get 2. If we roll a 1 and a 2, we would calculate the sum to get 3, etc. And so we want to fill out our table with the outcome that we're actually interested in. Okay, so that's the sum of the two dice when we roll them. So this is die one and die two. List the sample space of this experiment. Okay, so the sample space is going to be, it's about the sum of the number obtained when the two die are rolled. Um, it can be any number from two, three, four, all the way up to 12. Okay, any whole number from two to 12. Find the probability that the sum is greater than nine so probability that the sum is greater than 9, okay? So greater than 9 doesn't include 9. So greater than 9 would be 10 or more. So that's going to be these six outcomes down here out of the 36 possible outcomes. So probability of one-sixth of obtaining a sum greater than 9. Okay, so exercise 9C, some simple tree diagrams and um, simple tables to help you deal with multi-stage experiments.